Welcome to Anabel Console, your weekly podcast where we talk about books, games, food, and stuff that caught our attention during the week. My name is Chris, and with me is my beautiful co-host and wife, Karen. Wait, I fucked up. You did? Yes. Wow. Because it's horror oh, month. Start over, start over. Okay, okay, I'll start over. Hello, hello. Welcome to a horror console. Uh, books, games, food, stuff that caught our attention during the week. During the week, it, isn't it like what? Scri- <laughs> no. it, like scare streams. Oh, I don't Whatever. remember. My name is Crypt, and with me is my undead and ghastly wife, Crusty Toes. Did you just come up with that off the top of your head? Yes, because every, every horror month we do the yeah, Well, no, last year we forgot to do the The first names. week. Did we, it was only the first <laughs> week? Only the first week. Oh. And we almost were on par with the same shit and forgot the first week as well. Again. No, we were going to forget everything. Oh, yeah. We were going to forget the whole month. Mm-hmm. I got to add that onto the script because I completely forgot. Um, anyways, if this is your first time or 153rd time coming into the show, Welcome. We're glad you're joining us for an episode of A Novel Console. We hope you stick around, have some laughs, and maybe find some new things to enjoy. If you want to reach out to us, you could do it on our socials, which is basically at A Novel Console on every platform, or you could email us directly at a novel console at gmail.com. Or if you would like to support us, you could do it over at our Patreon at patreon.com slash a novel console. You should also tell your friends about the show if you have any, because maybe they'll listen to us and leave us a review wherever you can, because they help us be more discoverable. What the hell kind of noises are your ch- is your chair making? It's it's touching the knob. Are you sure that's yes. all it is? It's okay. touching the knob because that was some really intense farting. Yeah. Anywho, yeah, leave us reviews. They help us be more discoverable, and we have a Discord. If you want to join, send us an email t- saying that you want to join, or just go to our Twitter and look for the pinned tweet. Yes, the pinned tweet. I, I I am sorry. I am looking up this week's game, um, which I'm sure you all know. I'm looking up the Wikipedia because I forgot to. Um, but, hey, uh, we got a couple of things going on. And uh, the first thing, we're not doing Horror Month this month. We're doing Etovania Month. I was about to say, why the hell did you rush me through that book if we're not doing Horror Month? <laughs> well... Okay, so the past two years, has it been two it's, years that we've done Horror Month? Or has it been three? Because we're on year... Th- did we do Horror Month that first time? I know yes, we did we some did. horror stuff. We but, did, because I did the Resident yeah, Evil, um, Medieval, I did Ninth House. That one book, Mexican Gothic. Uh, yes. Wasn't that your one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ninth House, I read that. Yeah, cause we've done three Horror Months, right? Or two? No, we've done three, because Champ three. has been on two of them. Yeah, three. And the first one, he wasn't there because he hadn't found us yet. He hadn't? No. When did he come in? Uh, I think January or February later on that year. I'm sure he can tell us. I'm sure he can. I'm sure he will message as soon as he hears this part. Oh, yeah. So so instead of doing regular horror month, instead of subjecting ourselves to different horror things. Which I'm still going to do. uh, Right. On the side. Me too. But not with deadlines. (laughs) Because on the side, I'm playing Resident Evil 5 with Thrak. He's hating every second of it. Really? Is, oh, it's so good. Why is he hating it? He can't deal with the controls. Oh, no. <laughs> he's so, he's That's so awful. Low. Didn't you hear me screaming at him? I <laughs> did hear you like, come here, come here. <laughs> Don't do that. Wait. <laughs> I was like, is he playing with a child? Because <laughs> he's fighting the controls off in a corner, and I'm just like trying to keep him alive, but he's not listening. Bless his heart. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing like our separate horror stuff that at least that I'm bringing to Patreon or regular feed. Um, and you, do you want to talk about your scary stuff on separate Patreon episodes? Maybe, maybe. Even if it's by yourself for like 10 minutes? Maybe. People will love to listen. As you Apparently, saw this week. I'm the heart of the show. Right? So. They're like, fuck Chris, bring more care to me. Yeah, I'm currently rereading Northanger Abbey because it's a... Well, it's a satiric gothic story. Mm. It's Jane Austen making fun of gothic novels. Nice. <laughs> but, you know, that's fun. And um, have I started any el- anything else that's spooky? I'm not really reading anything else that's spooky right now, but I'm almost done with my gay book, Astrid Parker, and I'm going to pick up spooky 
non Ito once I finished it. So, what we could do is we could do a class on. You just gave me a class on the book, and I think just I might just like sit down and talk about a couple books at a time for a couple minutes. Okay, maybe we'll see when we get there. Okay, that that works. Once I finish something, that works. Anything, but I mean, these horror months have basically become Ito months, so we were just like, "Fuck it." We always Let's have just a just do Ito. Yeah, we we always have an Ito in there, so might as well we have. It's a, normally more than one. It has become more than one. Has yes lately in the past. It's easy. It's easy. They're quick and they're the most horrific things in the world. Right, and they fit fit the whole thing, and, and like we ha- there's such such a big backlog of Ito books that we have that we want that to we read. didn't even realize, right? And th- we want to read these books, but we haven't because you know we're let's save we them be for in the horror mood. Mode. Yeah, right. So let's you don't want to sit down and read Ito like at a pool party, right? Like it's just like weird. You, you imagine your your nephew. Reading, can you imagine reading the the fish one? Gio at the pool party. That would be, oh, that'd God. be fun. What were you gonna say, nephew? Which one? Uh, uh, Charlie, coming up to you and seeing the face of the lady that got frozen in this <laughs> week's book. Right. That that would be very fun. No, to explain that to his would parents. not go well. Um, and also because I'm in a huge Metroidvania kick, and I've I've been trying to scratch that itch for months. And I haven't been able to. Might as well just go through a bunch of Metroidvanias this month that are horror themed, aka Castlevania, except for this week's and next week's, which next week's is arguably a Metroidvania. It's really not. And Champ is probably going to be on next week, so keep an eye, an ear out for that. Um, I'll just play a bunch of Castlevania games that I want to play that I've been wanting an excuse to play. So do Etovania month. Woohoo! And, and, you know, five weeks of Etovania. That re- the title reminds me, I want to finally read Dracula this month. Dracula. Yeah, I've never finished it. Speaking of, Castlevania Nocturne came out. The new. The new show. Castlevania anime on Netflix. Holy fuck! Ten out of ten. Watch really? it. You watched the whole thing already? Yeah, I finished it. How many episodes? It's eight, and they're like twenty to thirty minutes each. We on the clock watching every single episode. No, I watched three on the clock, and it, it was kind of dead. And then I finished it yesterday. Um, the 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 last four, no, f- five. The last five that I had left, I watched them yesterday, and real good shit. And like at the end, something happens that it just okay. So if you've played Castlevania, then you know that Rondo of Blood or Dracula X or whatever you want to call it com- comes before Symphony of the Night. So it doesn't really follow the story of Cat Dracula X or Rondo of Blood, but it does lead into basically what Symphony of the Night would be. Is Symphony of the Night supposed to remind me of Phantom of the Opera? No. No? I don't know. Would you know? If it I was? wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, it's fucking insane what happens at the end. I was like, holy fuck, I need season two now, and I'm I don't know when that's gonna happen. Probably next year. It's really good shit. Um, one last thing I want to touch on before we get into today's book, um, the backlog winners episode. <laughs> Why are you making that noise? Cause it took us so long this time. It took me so long. <sighs> I think it took me just as long and my game was five hours long. <laughs> <laughs> Go um, okay, so here's here's what I'm thinking. After we upload this episode, we're going to have roughly an hour left of time that we won't use on this week's, on this month's uh, subscription to Buzzsprout. Uh-huh. It renews on the 3rd, which is Tuesday. So if we just record before Tuesday. So if we record Monday. And just put it out there. You realize you work in the office Monday. And that's fine. Okay. It really drains me when I work from home and then I have to record right after working from home because sitting here for eight hours kind of sucks. Fair enough, because you're taking me to buy me books Tuesday, so the least I can do is sit down and record an episode. <laughs> right. Um, so the, the thing is that mine was... Two games. I only got one of them done. I am going to do the other one. Um, I'm probably going to f- 
play it and finish it and do a class on it. If it has sufficient story, I could just give you like a class on Shantae all the way up to that, to that game. Or uh, we could do a regular one of these episodes where we review stuff. Yeah. You can review whatever book you want and I'll review that Shantae game. And then we could do another backlog episode for next year, for the end of the year. Um, Because I kind of got a couple ideas brewing in my head that I think that are going to be fun, you know, for like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thanksgiving? We're going to have a turkey themed episode? Is there read books about turkeys? Thanksgiving themed video games? I don't know that I have a Thanksgiving themed books. Please, please don't make me. I don't don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be like that. I I think it's going to be more like. I like reviewing comfort books or comfort games or games and books that we remember experiencing back in Thanksgiving no, when we were kids. No, 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 because mine no. would be Star Fox 64 and I'm sure the listeners don't want to listen about Star Fox 64 all over again. No, <laughs> they've suffered through it now. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out because I, I kind of want. Um, oh, the Harvest Moon episode. Oh yeah, that's something we're gonna do in thanks in 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 November. We can we can probably slate that for Thanksgiving week. That'll be a fun a fun thing. Um, I just want November to be kind of cozy, you know, like relaxed. It's, it's the 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 month of Caridon. It's my entire celebration. Oh God, we have to have anxiety my the entire month. month. <gasps> anxiety and a crusty dog with anxiety. Hey. It's the month to celebrate me. It is. So, are you ready for book talk? I am ready. Do you want to introduce it? Right now? Like... This is Book Talk! This week's book is Fragments of Horror by Junji Ito. (laughs) So (laughs) we've just gotten to a point in our relationship where we go to Barnes and Noble and you leave me and you come back with an Ito book. (laughs) You're like, we don't have this one yet. I'm getting it. (laughs) Every fucking time. I don't know how. We go to- <laughs> We went to Books a Million this time, and you just wandered off. We don't have this one yet. I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because we go to Barnes and Noble every. We go twice every week, and no, twice we every week I do the same <laughs> shit. Imagine how many Ito books we have. <laughs> Speaking of, I'm pretty sure that we don't have. Two that I've seen a bunch of times. I gotta get like a list of the ones we have. So next time, well, I've got them in my pile right now. Um, <laughs> you don't have all of them. No, I I, I don't have a, no. I have all the ones that we haven't read. I think. Okay, I also no, need a list because there are still more in here, aren't there? Or mm, I don't know. I think there's still I, at least I one or two that you read... have read that I haven't read. No, the only one that I read that you didn't read read was Smashed. Not Shiver. I haven't read Shiver. Shivers in my stack. Shivers in your stack. But we read Liminal Zone, right? Yeah. It's on my bookshelf. The ones so that those... we both read, I put on my bookshelf. Uzumaki, Tomi, Gyo, Liminal Zone. I all the ones Tomy. on the bookshelf. Oh, right. I need to finish Tomi. All the ones on the bookshelf are ones that we have mostly read. <laughs> okay. Frankenstein. Ooh, Frankenstein was good. Okay, so I, we got to take like pictures of them. So when we go next time, because I'm pretty sure there's like no, we don't have no longer human. No, and no, it, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. It's on. It's on the stack. Really? Yeah. What about the white one that has like an eyeball on it that kind of looks like your Lord of the Rings books, but white and Junji Ito? We you, we need to go look at the stack. Yeah. I currently have two gigantic stacks of books on my nightstand because I pulled. Every book that I could possibly read this month, well, I no, I know I'm not going to read all of them, but all the books that I was interested in reading this month so that I am confined in my mood readerness to the, those piles. So, like, I've got cozy books, I've got fall vibe book, books, I've got scary books, 
Um, I guess if if y'all want to see the picture of the piles, just let me just know. And I'll it send the... it to Discord. I'll wait until the episode's up. Yeah. And they can be like, where's the picture, Karen? <laughs> Like here you go, my little minions. <laughs> Speaking of, you didn't post the Boston picture. I didn't. No, you didn't post any of the Boston pictures. What if I post it tomorrow and then remind everybody, hey, new episode comes out tomorrow? Remember to do that then. Remind me. No, remember to do it. Hey Siri. <laughs> Remind me tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. to post a novel console and a reminder that a new episode comes on Monday morning. Oh, God. Are you are you waiting? Okay, I added that. (laughs) Okay, I'll remember now. As long as Siri doesn't make my reminders disappear like she has been. Anywho, yeah, so... I'm pretty sure Fragments of Horror is one of those books that you went and found randomly and came back. We're like, we don't have this one yet. Let's get it. Or I'm getting it. Um, so, yeah, we came home with Fragments of Horror. And it's one of those that I honestly like kept seeing on that shelf. And like it wasn't registering in my mind that it's an Ito book because it looks totally different than the rest of them. Kind of looks so like it's a no little longer encycl- human. Huh? Kind of looks like a little, like, I don't want to say an encyclopedia. One of those little books that has like, Facts and shit in it about other stuff. An encyclopedia? It's not an encyclopedia <laughs> because it's not massive. It's like a little pamphlet. Like a tiny book. almanac or something? Maybe. Like a, Maybe. Like I, a I don't little, know how to explain it. I don't know. It just doesn't look very Ito-ish, you no. know? Until you hold it and you actually look at the cover and then you realize it's actually quite horrific. Because it's like, if... it's not holographic, but it's like... There, it's like the the creepy stuff is like etched into the cover, so like you can subliminally. See. It's, it's, it's subliminal messaging, kind of, but picture drawn. I don't know. Okay, so if you take the book right and you remove that cover, then it's the creepy stuff. That's that creepy stuff is what's it's, printed uh, exactly, yeah. exactly with naked lady and shit and yeah, 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 and like the giant monsters and stuff. Yes. So this. Is the first Ito that had me ready to hurl. Like, I was losing it. I thought I was going to puke on the way to dinner. I was getting the sweats. I had to close it and take a breather. Like, it was rough. Like, this is what I thought they were going to make me feel like from the start. Where they just kind of made me cringe a lot and freak out a little bit. This had me ready to, to die. It did. <laughs> um, I don't think you felt that way reading that story. No, no. I, Do you understand why I felt that way? Yes, I get what you why you felt that it way. It was a little too real. It was. It was way too realistic. That one story was was rough. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that story. I did you read the in, at the end of the book where uh, there's like a letter from Ito. Saying, oh, this is the first anthology series horror book I've wrote since 2008 or 2006. And I couldn't really get into my swing of horror. And I wrote the first story and the editor was like, this story shit. Please don't publish it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see that. And then I read the story. And, and when I read it, I was like, this is really this is very tame. For, very, very for tame. Ito. <laughs> yeah. So it's this girl that has a that's married to some guy, and the guy is hidden in his futon and won't leave. A futon is uh little Japanese beds, basically like a pad on the floor that you sleep. Like if, if it looks it like he's wrapped up in a sleeping bag. It's kind of like a sleeping bag, but the thing is like you pick it up every day and you put it away because you're sleeping in your living room or something or your work or Is that how the Japanese really sleep? Some. Some? Some. I couldn't do that. Some have beds, some have futons. It really Mm. depends on whatever you like. Okay. Um, So he was in his futon all wrapped up and he kept saying, there's monsters all over, there's monsters all over. And she had to work and support him. And make the money for the house and then Because come he home, literally wouldn't leave the futon. Right. And take care of him. And then one night while she was sleeping, she woke up and she saw the monsters he was talking about. And he confesses that 
he hooked up with one of the monsters because he thought it was a lady. And then she started haunting him and whatever. So she runs out of the house. She comes back two months later. He's half dead. And he wasn't having, he, he wasn't being attacked by monsters or anything. He was just hallucinating because there were spores of mushrooms. And yeah, food. she like lifts his futon and it's just like this spongy shit everywhere. And it was just mold. Yeah. And, and he was making halluc- him hallucinate. And that was like, yeah, it was pretty this, tame. This, uh, and I'm glad that that didn't set the tone for the book. Yeah. Because that. It just eases you into it. It's like, it's like the most basic Junji Ito story. Like this creepy, out of this world, horrific shit is just, you know, everyday things. <laughs> like you're just hallucinating because you have mold. So. It's crazy. Your, your so, turn. Okay, so it's my, book talk. It's not Chris talk. My turn. <laughs> so the next story takes it up, I guess, a little bit more. That's the one with the house, right? I think so. The second story, pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. So there's this like creepy woman who just pops up at this fancy historic house and is like, can I see your house? I just love it. And she comes in. And I'm like, this woman is sexually attracted to this house. This is very disturbing. And she, like, worms her way into staying and then hooks up with the dad and they get married. And dad starts to be sad. And kid's like, why are you so sad? And he's like, it's this house. I'm so jealous of it. And turns out the homegirl's literally having sex with the house. And I was a little weird. Little, little. Yeah. (laughs) It was very weird. I, uh, I didn't really totally know what to make of that. And I, I I don't remember exactly how that one ended. I know um, they like I think the, there were eyeballs everywhere and I think the house just turned kind of like into a monster house and they, they left. ran out. And that's it. Yeah. Because the dad wanted to set it on fire and the daughter didn't let him. It was it was one of those where something horrific happens and there is like a voluntary victim to it and they just kind of like love that it's happening to them because mm-hmm. the lady kind of became part of the house and she was like i'm part of the house Yay. yeah it's weird so the the next story is what really fucked me up <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> oh, it fucked me up so it's the same couple from the first story with the mold i'm pretty sure isn't it i don't know I know he he has a lot of the same characters. He has a lot of the same names. Names. Okay. Maybe it was the same name. I don't know. Now I'm second guessing everything. But um, this dude, he cheats on his girlfriend with a fortune teller. And she tells him she just like is in love with his head. Like she needs his head to add to her collection. And he's just so enamored with her. He's like, sure, you can have my head. And she literally takes a strand of her hair and wraps it around his head like she's going to cut off a mole while he's falling asleep at night and ties it so tight his head starts to slice off. Oh, my God. He runs around freaking out. And I'm going to throw up just thinking about it because dude's head finally severs and he's like running around town trying to hold his head in place because you know the nerves and shit and everything and oh my god and he goes back to the girlfriend and is like you gotta help me this crazy lady sliced off my head i don't know what i was thinking and crazy fortune teller lady shows up oh my god (gasps) oh oh you're gonna have to talk about it i can't do it (laughs) i'm not gonna get into details it's a lot. It's a, it's pretty gruesome. It's worth it. It is very difficult to read, and I just want to throw up thinking about For it. For you, it was it was that wasn't even the that part did nothing to me. Nothing. nothing. The, I was losing my shit. I was like slapping the book and looking away and squealing. I mean, I you know I was in the mm-hmm. car with you. That part ah, did nothing to me. It was awful. The children that came out of. Her body, it was that was. I was like, weird. "What the fuck?" <laughs> that that is, I think that's the only time in this entire book where I went like, "What the fuck is happening?" <laughs> it was a little out of nowhere. It's very random and horrifying. Very horrifying. Yep. That is a very good story. 
that was a very very do you have the book with you i don't because the book has the name of the stories in the in the oh yeah beginning. that's true shit let me pause this so you can get the book all right what's the name of that story tomio red turtleneck tomio red turtleneck yes yes red yes. turtleneck because I don't know if you remember, but the turtleneck was white or a lighter color, and then his blood winds up staining the whole thing. Right. That's quite gruesome. Right. Oh, is that him on the? That's him on the cover. Yes, that's him on the cover. Oh, I just put two and two together. Oops. Mm. I see it now. Um, what What was the next story? The next story was gentle goodbye. That's the one that you thought was way too sentimental. I thought it was a good story. And I think the payoff was worth it, but I wouldn't call it horror at all. You know what I think? I think that the first two stories very gently worked you into the horrific third story. And then Gentle Goodbye was like like your thirst quencher, okay? It gave you a little bit of a break. Okay. Dissection Chan is pretty rough. It's pretty demented. It's pretty freaky. Mm. Uh, you're crazy. And then Blackbird is pretty fucking demented Blackbird and freaky. Was good. That one was pretty. And good. then Magami Nanakuse is just fucking weird. It is so weird. Which one was that one? With the drag queen author. And the tics. Oh, oh, that one was kind of stupid. Whispering Woman is creepy, but not like, like super creepy and sort of sentimental. Right. So the 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 first sentimental one um, is about. Every time somebody dies in a family, in a, fa- in a specific, specific family, family. Um, the family would pray f- so that the person would come back. So that their their essence would remain sort of their after image. So like you could see them there physically, you could touch them, talk to them, but it only gave you like an extra 10 to 20 years with that person so that you didn't have to say the abrupt goodbye you knew they were dead, and you still had more time to build up to get to ready the to ultimate. let them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like I like the way that one pays off at the end. That one was was very, that one was good, but I wouldn't call it horror at all. No, definitely not horror. It's a it's paranormal, but it's not horror by any means. I mean, I wouldn't even call it paranormal because ghosty. Uh, because there's there's the theory of people's energies remaining, and that's what ghosts are. But basically, it's just their energies that they put out into the world becoming a physical manifestation. So that I wouldn't really call that horror. Yeah, it was just sad. Or, <laughs> it was very right? sad, especially with the little girl. Oh, that was really heartbreaking. When she was with the mother, and she's like, I don't think I'll ever get married, because she doesn't know that, right, that she'll never ghost. have the chance to get married, because she's going to disappear in roughly... Ten years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, it was I don't know, it was sad. Yeah, I, I could say that, that that was kind of a sad story. Especially the ending. I, I really liked the ending on that one. Um... But then you get thrown into Dissection Chan. Oh, my God. And that girl is fucking demented, and there were so many titties. And <laughs> just like, what the hell? She was so crazy. It's she about this girl that wants eyes. to get dissected. Dissect me, please. It was really weird. Really, really weird. I just... Again, I like the ending of that one a, a lot, too. I feel like it, it, it had a good ending. Yeah, she got what she wanted. <laughs> right. Several times over, apparently. Yep. Based off of the scars on her body. Jesus Christ. There were just so many titties. Mm-hmm. You saw her titties every five seconds. Yeah. Ancient she had nice head. titties even when she was ancient. <laughs> she like had little baby nipples. Oh my God. <laughs> there was little pinpricks. Right. And then, okay, so Blackbird. Blackbird was fucking weird. That's the one with the Kardashian bird monster. Yes. This woman had gigantic cheeks and fucking huge. She looked like Darcy from <laughs> right. 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> really? She, yeah, she looked like she'd been plastic surgery to hell and back. And gigantic titties. I mean, they didn't show them like they did Dissection Chan's. But 
That was a fucking weird, weird mind fuck of a story. That was that was a good story. The I liked that it was open ended. So that like you well, but you don't really understand how it was happening and like how homeboy was eating his own flesh oh, like oh, before she did it. You know what I'm saying? Premise of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Tell the premise of the story. Premise of the story is this dude was out like bird watching in the woods and he came across this hiker who had been injured, broken his legs. And he said that he'd survived off the food in his bag for like a month. And they were like, what? But they took him to the doctor and he's like, I have no family. I have no friends. I have no job. Please stay here in the hospital with me. So bird watcher dude's like, okay, I'll stay. And he wakes up in the middle of the night and there's this creepy Kardashian woman on top of the dude making out with him from the looks of the things. She's not actually making out with him. She's feeding him from her own mouth like a bird. And, uh, yeah. (laughs) Homeboy's like, yeah, she's the reason I stayed alive while I was out there for a month. Because she brought me meat, and it was the tastiest meat I'd ever had, but now it doesn't taste so good. And she gave me blood to drink. Yay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, um, mm. Mm. Yeah. And she keeps coming back, but things don't taste good anymore. And he's trying to escape her, and, um homeboy who found him like tries to chase her or tries to track her down and she winds up flying out away because she's a bird it was weird it was really fucking weird Mm. her lips are huge Mm -hmm. they're so fucking big Mm -hmm. yeah Mm. what the hell (laughs) i don't know where you're going you're Uh, just that's it that's it nothing (laughs) she's she's it's really freaky so that that has kind of a, a a time travel yeah, they did mention the time travel because later he's like found dead and they do biopsies and um, it turns out that he had been eating his own flesh that she was feeding to him. So, yeah, she ultimately kills him by eating his flesh off of his body and his eyeballs because mm-hmm. he winds up like spitting out an eyeball at one point that she's put in his mouth. It was his own fucking eyeball. What the hell? Right. Yeah. It was wacky. Yeah, that... I like that story. That one was fun. What's the next one? The next one was Magabi Nanakuse. Oh, God. It was weird. It was really weird. So it was about this drag queen author who writes books about people with tics. Mm -hmm. And there's this girl who's just enamored with the author and was like, I have tics, too. And, like, basically makes herself have tics because she loves these books so much. And she decides she's going to be an author and she's going to go, like, intern with this author first she gets there and the first thing she says when she sees this woman is oh my god you're a man just like (laughs) 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 i thought she was just a really interesting looking woman i wow um and that one was weird it It was was so weird was like the drag queen was like you're a faker you don't really have tics and she basically made this girl have tics, sort of. And then they, like, throw her into a dungeon. And her face, like, becomes a tick. Because she, like, revolts against the tick so much that, like, the muscles in her face just, like, become a tick. And wind up going, well, I don't even know. <laughs> it was so fucking weird. It was really, really, really weird. <laughs> I don't know. What's the next one? The next one was The Whispering Woman. I like that one. I didn't like the ending. I didn't really either. It was upsetting. I feel like it it, it like it if it would have stopped a page before when it ended, it would have been perfect. But before no. she was stabbing. Right. Mm. So that story is about a girl whose mother died when she was young. So now she's uncertain of everything and she questions everything. Should I sit down? Should I stand up? If I sit down, how should I sit down? Should I cross my legs? Should I sit up straight? Should, should I use a pillow? What should I do while I'm sitting down? Should I draw? Should I cross it? Should I 
should I drink water? And if I drink water, how should I drink it? With a straw? With ice? Right. Like, should I sip it? Should I gulp it? Okay. Should I? Yeah. Like that. Her dad hires a person to help her make these decisions and to, you know, get her through the day. This person does an amazing job. But the dad is like, it's kind of weird how good you are at this job. So why don't you take a break? And the lady's like, I don't want to take a break. They can also tell that he can tell it's taking a very noticeable physical toll on her. Right. And she has like bruises and stuff. And he's like, if you say so, she's like, yeah, this is giving me purpose. So it turns out that she had an abusive boyfriend who was, uh, it was unclear whether he was forcing her to do this job or not. But it was clear that he was taking her money and going in and out and wasting it and whatever. And the dad, the dad and his aide were like, should we do something about it? Should we not? Whatever. And it ends up getting to the point where she's emaciated and she dies from a beating he gave her. And then her ghost kind of comes back and stays with the girl. I thought that was perfectly fine because the girl was... You know, back to normal. She had her friend helping her along every day. And then in the end, the ghost teaches her how to stab so she can go stab her boyfriend. Yay! <laughs> and that's how the book ends. He's dead. <laughs> yep. Um, I think that if it w- the girl would have just died and stayed being her friend, I think it would have been perfect. <laughs> no need to stab the boyfriend. But when she stabs the boyfriend, I was like, okay. I kind of like the sweet revenge part of it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, it's like, I'm glad that fucker got stabbed to death. But also, this poor girl, she killed the man. Hopefully, she won't take the downfall for it. Right? I... <laughs> I, I have to say, I really, really enjoyed this. I feel like this is a very solid start to Etovania Month. I, I really liked it, too. I mean, like I said, it was the first one that's really made me feel the things that I thought I was going to feel before I read my first Ito. So that was fun, even even if it did kind of make me want to die. <laughs> that was rough. It I was, was struggling. The Ito anime on Netflix, right? Uh, no. What 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 story is it? I, I think know? I don't know. I think it's like a. a I, I know, can't watch that shit. I know there's, <laughs> there's no way. The, I the know red, there's, red turtleneck. I know there's the one with the balloons with the nooses attached to them, but I don't know what else is on there. I don't know if Shoichi is in it or Soichi or whatever his name is. We could try. But, I can't make any promises. But I I really enjoyed it. Like I it, it made me cringe. It gave me the heebie-jeebies reading it outside last night and hearing armadillos armadillos in the bushes. That your mom wanted to He's shoot. Like somebody's coming to get me. That Kardashian bird woman's coming to get me. Oh my god! Because <laughs> I read that story woman. while I was sitting out there. Um, dissection dissection Sean is coming to get me with her scalpel. I'm like what the fuck. Um, no, I, I really liked it. I gave it five stars. Good. It's a very quick and easy read. Very yeah. quick. Yeah, very quick. I, I read it in total, what, an hour? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Well, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. I, I really liked it, too. It was it was very enjoyable. Um, really good waste of an afternoon read. <laughs> like, if you have an afternoon to waste, yeah. you could do worse stuff. I mean, you could play The Last of Us. That's a bigger waste of time. Um but yeah, no, it, it was it was very fun. Five stars for me too, even though I feel like the five star rating scale is a bit broken. You're broken. I am broken. <laughs> My shoulders fucked. You're so broken. Yeah. Your oh. knee, your shoulder, your face. I love My your dog. face. Oh. All right. So is that it for book talk? Anything else you want to say? That's it for book talk. That's it for book talk. <laughs> book <laughs> talk. <laughs> Boo. All right. This is Games and Stuff.
All right. For this week's game, I have Infernax for the Nintendo Switch. It is also free on Game Pass for the Xbox. So if you have Xbox with Game Pass, play this game because it is fantastic. It was developed by Berserk Studio, published by the Arcade Crew, and uh, it was released on February 14th, 2022. It is Metroidvania, and it is single and multiplayer. So uh, you can go through this by yourself or with friends. It has some pretty decent scores. It looks like it ranges from the 8s all the way to the 9s, high 9s. So, um, yeah, and for next. So basically, it's a Metroidvania. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm going to explain this every single week uh, for the rest of the month. A Metroidvania is a platforming game where your progress might be uh, blocked or stopped because you are missing an ability. So you would have to go to a separate part of the map to find that ability. And eventually, you can go back to that part where you got stuck in originally and overcome it because you have a new ability. Illusion Island! Exactly. Just we like, need to keep playing that. Right. Just like Illusion Island. Illusion and Island. And actually, we should watch that Mickey cartoon that is based off of because I have seen some clips on TikTok and it is fucking unhinged. It's a cartoon? There's a cartoon. Not Did about, it come out after the game? Not or? about the game, but about the- those... The science of Mickey, Goofy, and Donald, and uh-huh. Minnie. Why is it unhinged? Y- 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 you just have to... To see it? Yeah. Um, okay. Some of the jokes are like, what? <laughs> so... I'm down. Yeah. Anyways. So, like I said, Metroidvania. So, you know, you get platforming abilities. There's platforming challenges. You have a bunch of bosses to defeat. And uh, the thing about this game is that this game is incredibly bloody. It is excessively gory, and it looks like a super, like an original Nintendo game. So you have like at the beginning of the game, you run into this person, and he's like, "Please kill me." And the game gives you two options: kill him or help him. If you kill him, then you get an animation of your character bashing his skull in with a mace, and like you see, like what the. An eyeball flying out, teeth being broken from underneath the jaw. What? If you save him, then you see him turn into a giant fucking monster. So his flesh rip and everything. What did you decide? I did the first time that I played it. Put your phone away. Sorry, I was just catching up on an engagement group. Fuck the engagement. Anyways, the the first time I uh, decided to kill him. Because I had chosen help him, and the boss beat the fucking crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and and the thing is, I know that was a skill issue, because it's like the first thing you do once you turn on the game. Like, you see the beginning of the story about how your character is coming, is coming back from the Crusades. Is it the Crusades or the Inquisition? And anyway, I don't know. What was the, the, the uh, Catholic Church known for? The Crusades, right? I... Think with the Templars, so I don't remember. Anyways, you're coming back home from that, so your character's like, "I'm tired. I don't want to fight anymore." And his homeland is taken over by all these fucking demons and monsters and shit. And <laughs> that's the first thing you do. You meet somebody. He's like, "Kill me!" And if you t- try to help him, you get into a boss fight. And if you don't beat that boss fight, it- it's your fault. You suck at the game, which I did. That was the first time I played it months ago. So I decided, let me just try it again. I have nothing to do. I got like 15 minutes to play whatever. So worst that can happen, I play it again. I don't like it. I restarted the whole game and I saw that it had a casual mode. I was like, ooh, that's for me. So I played the whole game in casual mode. Oh my gosh. So it's not easy because the (laughs) game is still not easy, but it's a lot more doable than playing it in normal. Um, And like the thing is, you're going to run into a bunch of things in the game where they they tell you do this or do that and depending on which one you pick then it has a different outcome later on in the story for example there's one where a mage tells you please kick these people off my land 
And when you go talk to them, the people are like, we'll leave, but have a drink with us first or kick them out. So you have to pick which one you would do. If you choose kick them out, then you immediately make an enemy out of that group permanently. If you tell them, okay, I'll have a drink, whatever, then, you know, you probably make an enemy out of the wizard. And it sounds pretty fun. I mean, yeah, you have like a bunch of stuff like that. And like the thing is that goofy. that one fight at the beginning where the person's like, kill me if you kill him, then I think you lock yourself out of a very important mission. If you help him, his wife is like, hey, these are the people that did this to him. Please help me. And at the end, she gives you like a really cool reward. But you have to beat that boss you have to, to get that to that. <laughs> yeah, you have to beat the boss. But worry not, because if you suck like I do, the game has a multiplayer mode. So you can play with a friend from the beginning. And it is a super short Metroidvania. Like, the map is tiny. It's tiny, tiny. Like, I would cross that map so many times from side to side doing, like, different quests and shit. And it was just so quick and easy. And, like, they, eventually you get a spell, because you get some spells and stuff. Uh, to that teleports you from safe point to safe point. And sometimes I would just not use it because the place where I need to go was so close that I didn't even need to teleport to it. Um, it It's so good. It's such a rewarding game. And it, it's like old Castlevanias where you only have a weapon that attacks forward and that's it. Like in old Castlevania, that was a whip. In this game, it's a mace. So you have a mace where you bash these monster skulls in with them. Um and there there are, once you beat the game, um, they tell you, oh, try these different names so that you can use different characters and play through the game with different characters. You know, so you have like a mage character or a character with a sword or what Burger Champ told me. You can play as the guys from Contra. So if you enter the Konami code, which I don't know off the top of my head, which should be some sort of gamer sin, um, you unlock the guys from Contra. Contra was this super hardest balls game from the original Nintendo where you were playing as two guys with guns shooting. It was kind of like Metal Slug, but imagine Metal Slug on steroids and hard as fuck. Thank you. Yes. Um, you get to play as one of those guys through the entire game. So you have like guns and you're going up against these demons and monsters with guns. And like the whole point of the game is to like find these five towers get to the top of the tower beat the demon enemy in it and that would break a gem that you would eventually need to break to go into this other castle that takes you to hell so you can go kill the devil which that final fight was such a fucking nothing of a fight it was i i just like stood in a corner and just kept hitting the enemy the devil until he died but like the final animation is so fucking crazy because, like, the devil is coming from the bottom, like, flying up, and your character is falling down, like, covered in electricity and fire, and you just, like, smash straight through the devil's head, and, like, it implodes <laughs> into blood and what guts, and you have, like, a giant half-dead goat titties out demon on the floor. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. It's such a fucking crazy game. It's so, so, so fucking good. Um now, the things that I didn't like about the game, um, you usually when you play Metroidvanias, you get a double jump, you get some abilities that help you reach higher platforms that make sense. In this game, you don't have a high jump. You just have an up attack. And that up attack launches you up into the air, and then you have to make your way down falling, which works, but you can't do crazy platforming things with it like I wanted to do because you also get an attack that helps you launch yourself horizontally. And I wanted to be able to combine up and then launch myself horizontally, but I couldn't because the horizontal attack is one that you have to hold. And while you're attacking, you cannot hold to charge that attack up. So I didn't like that part. I felt like the platforming was a little bit limited sometimes. But I really did like the rest of the game. Like, it had a day and night cycle where you would be running around and out of nowhere, it would go nighttime and you would have wraiths and werewolves and shit attacking you. Like, what, there's a secret boss fight against a werewolf that you have to do so you can unlock a special part of the game to find 
a priest to go do an exorcism on some guy in the church that's being possessed by the devil. What the hell? Yeah. It, it's so good. It's great. It's fantastic. It, it, it's free on Game Pass. So what better price than free 99 is there? <laughs> for a game. For horror month. For a horror month. For a, for a Catholic horror uh, uh, metroidvania. And Burger Champ had told me this game is fucking awesome. I'm like, I'm going to play it. And I never got into it because that first boss beat my ass. And now that I did, yes, I'm all, all about it. I want uh, fucking Infernax 2. I want to find somebody to play Infernax with all the way through because it's so much fun. And I'm sure multiplayer, it'll be even more fun. Even going to hell and fighting all the demons all over again was great. And, and it's even harder because when you get to hell and you fight all the demons again, the big boss demons that you fought the first time around, you fight two of them at the same time. So there's one that's underwater and you have to fight two of them underwater. There's one that's like a fucking angel baby with fucking armor that on, you can only hit when it opens its mouth to spit at what you. What the hell? Right? You fight two of those at the same time. It, it's... it's it's so good. It, it like scratched this old Castlevania itch that I had that I didn't know that I had because I have, have no nostalgia for the old Castlevania games. I only have nostalgia for the Metroidvania Castlevania. Did it scratch your old Catholic school itch? No, because there weren't any nuns that were possessed that you had to hit with your mace. Sad day. Yeah. But it's great. I, I, when did I even get this game? Um, I don't. I don't remember the score that I gave it. Ooh, let me see here. So many discords. Games beaten. Uh, Infernax, 9 out of 10. Um, it's pretty impressive. Let's see. The last trial before the extremely easy final boss was tedious but manageable. The game is a perfect, bloody, gory, and fulfilling short Metroidvania. Definitely worth the, the time. Might fuck around and check out the unlockable characters. I did check them out, but I didn't play a whole playthrough with them because I'm, I'm not going to do a whole nother playthrough just by myself. But they were pretty pretty cool to use. Uh, the magician kind of sucks because he uses your magic meter, and you have to wait for it to recharge for you to be able to attack again. But you know, self-imposed hard mode. But yeah, get it, Infernax. It is fucking awesome. So good, Infernax. You know what time? How many it is? times are you gonna say it, Infernax? 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 Yeah. In. Furnax. You know what time it is? It's time for Give Me the Garbage. Do you want to introduce it or do you want me to introduce it? Or are you too focused on saving your phone? <laughs> Both. <laughs> I just did my part of the introduction. You go ahead. Okay. All right. That is Give Me the Garbage. restaurant is my pie in albany georgia which place i think it's it's a chain my pie yes is not yes, what it's pie. called my pie yes my pie yes so is it my pie let me it's, check it's called my pie right i am not sure now i'm like 99.9 percent .9 positive it's called my pie my pie albany georgia yes my pie there is a your pie but this is my pie Okay. As I knock over treats in the floor. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we went to Starbucks one day, and Starbucks shares a parking lot with my pie. It is, it is a chain. It is. It is a chain. I told you it was a chain. But it's like four stores. <laughs> okay, where are they? <laughs> Nevada, Georgia, Alabama, and Utah. Very fucking wow, weird places. Wow, that's really random. Okay, <laughs> yeah, right? cool. So, um. Yeah, so Starbucks shares a parking lot with this place, and uh, you decided, oh, I'm going to go get a slice of pizza. I'm like, I don't think places up here sell pizza by the slice, and sure enough, they don't, because I know the South, there there are no pizza by the slice places. We are not in New York. We are not in Orlando. Florida had them by the slice. Oh, my God. We're not in Florida anymore, sir. So um, we uh, we went there one night for dinner. 
and I was a little too adventurous. <laughs> I ordered a pizza called the Butcher or Butcher. What was it called exactly? I'm, I'm looking for it. Um, um, I know Butcher was in the name, pretty sure. I think you would have passed it. Can you not control F Butcher? I'm not going to control F Butcher. I'm, oh, I'm my too God. Lazy. Uh, oh, Spicy Butcher. Spicy Butcher. What is on the Spicy Butcher? The Fra Diavolo sauce, Parmesan, fresh mozzarella, pepperoni, sausage, and pepperoncini and basil. I wanted to die. <laughs> it was too much. Way too much. That sauce, it was full of red pepper flakes. I should have known better. <laughs> I should have. Okay, But okay. I think wait, I wait, borderline wait, wait, wait. panic ordered and you... it sounded fun. Panic ordered, but that that's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> you didn't explain what the concept of the place is. Oh, I didn't? Oops, no. you explain. So this is a build-your-own pizza place, but it's not like any of those other shitty, it's godforsaken, like Blaise. terrible, fucking build-your-own pizza wannabe places, like Blaze or Flippers. Fuck those places. Is Flippers a build-your-own pizza place? Flippers was build-your-own. Really? Yes. I never built my own at Flippers. It was disgusting. I always got the buffalo chicken pizza. Because in those places, right, they make your pizza. The sauce is a fucking wet blob of sauce. Then all of the ingredients... That's what sauce is. Then all of the ingredients are fucking wet. And then they throw it in that little shitty oven, brick oven that they have, and give you half wet, half raw <laughs> it fucking is very pizza. Wet pizza. I hate that shit so much. I know. This place, however, <laughs> it's build your own, but it's build your own New York style pizza, <laughs> right? So that's that's a fucking step in the right direction. Right. Build your own New York style pizza, right? And then they have this amazing oven, right? It's a real fucking pizza oven that they use to cook your pizza. Yes. It's not a brick oven because nothing wrong with brick ovens, just that not everybody knows how to cook a fucking brick oven. Not everybody knows how to do it right. And because nobody know, not everyone knows how to do it right, I'd rather nobody do it at all. So this place Tell has us an, how you really feel. This place has an amazing oven. Like I, I, it's pretty cool to watch. Every time I go in there, I tell Karen, Karen, look at the oven. Look at the oven. Look at the oven. Look, look, at, how, look at that. Look, how, look at it. <laughs> look at what they're doing. Oh my god! Look how fucking cool that oven is. Oh, they dear. have an amazing oven, <laughs> right? Yes. So it's build your own New York style pizza. It is. But you can fantastic. also pick from there. Um, their signature pre-made, pies. right? Yes. They have like like the spicy they have butcher. pepperoni. They have cheese, and they have the fancy fun ones. Right. Yes. And right. I decided I was going to be fancy and fun. I got the and spicy, I got a butcher. spicy butcher, <laughs> and I could barely eat a slice. Woo! It was spicy. It was very, it was very spicy. Very spicy. But we did get Caesar salads. We oh my god, a Caesar, Caesar. salad. They take the pizza crust and they crust it up and make it really crunchy, and then they pour that on top of the, the croutons. That, as croutons. That, yeah. Oh my god. All garlicky and shit. So, so fucking good. Good. The best Caesar salad I've ever had in my life. And they give you this very good Caesar. It almost tastes it's amazing. Caesar dressing. It almost tastes like what real Caesar is. You know, with the anchovies and mm -hmm, the mustard mm -hmm. and everything. That's what it tastes like. I don't know if that's what it is, but that's what it tastes like it's, to me. It's really freaking good. So when I had your leftovers, so I poured the Caesar dressing over the spicy butcher. Fucking night and day difference. It was bearable. It was delicious. It was creamy. It was spicy. So I good. I still won't order it again. <laughs> it if you was order too it, much. <laughs> tell them to put some of the Caesar on Drizzle afterwards. Caesar on. <laughs> Lord help. Um, I had the regular pepperoni, the New York Roni, which is New York pe New York pizza sauce, Parmesan, mozzarella, and pepperoni. Um, very, very fucking solid New York style pizza. That every time so good. Every time that I want New York style pizza, which is always this is what you that's want. what I want. This, this is 
the only pizza that I found that comes close to Antonio's. Yeah. And what Santino's used to be. The crust is so good. It's so crunchy. Oh, oh, so good. So we we went uh, a second time because on Tuesdays they have a deal where you can get two of the signature Specialty pies. Specialty pizzas, yeah. Um, you can't do, I think, you can't do build your own, Yeah, right? that's the only thing you can do. Yeah. Um, two signature pies and two drinks for 20 bucks, 1999, um, which you can't beat. So that time I got, what was it, like grandma's pizza or? What's a grandma's pie? Yes. What's on that? So it's garlic and extra virgin olive oil, Parmesan, mozzarella, oregano, marinara sauce, and basil. Y'all. So this one, it, it's. Ooh. It, it like they put everything and then they kind of scoop the marinara little dollops sauce. of sauce like you get like wh- how many are in that picture a six seven yeah like about seven through a all circle over the pizza. and then one in the middle right it was real fucking it's good so fucking good it's so fresh i think i think the the olive oil and the uh basil really really it felt light because yes. the sauce was also yes. very fresh too. Yes, it is so refreshing, but also still like hearty and filling. If that makes sense, you were disappointed because you thought I was going to save part of it, and I ate the whole thing. <laughs> Unlike the spicy butcher, where I could barely. No, eat. no, no. I, I thought you were going to take it to work. Oh, okay. And I no, I stuffed my face. It was amazing. Yeah. That was very, very, very good pizza. I think I'll, I'll probably get that every time. The the New York Roni, whatever, is is also very good. But that one, I, it hit the spot. I really just want to get like a plain New York. Because just, just the cheese. Just cheese. Just cheese. I really want to do that next time we go. But the pepperoni is really good. And then I had the Mama Mitza, which is New York pizza sauce, Parmesan, mozzarella, pepperoni, sausage, ham, and salami. It was good. You took off the ham for me, and it was awesome. Because we swapped slices. Yes, we did. Um, I had a bite that had all of it, the pepperoni, sausage, ham, and salami, all in one bite. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) And crunchy crust. And crunchy crust. And, like, they know how to do sausage on pizza. Because a lot of places will either give you like little like sausage pellets. ground beef pellets. Or yeah. ground beef. And it, it's usually dry. It's nasty Like every flavor. time I've been it somewhere. It just tastes like fennel. Yeah, that somebody had pizza that they'd ordered from like Papa John's or Domino's or Pizza Hut. If it had sausage on it, I knew I just needed to pick it off because it's awful. Right? It's like. It's so awful. It's like putting bacon on a pizza. Like yeah. you don't cook the bacon, put it on the pizza, and then cook it again. Yeah. Um, they they I don't like bacon on pizza. I I don't because it, like again, not everybody knows how to fucking do it. Yeah. But this sausage, it's either raw or overcooked. This sausage is crazy good. Like I it could just eat a bowl of the sausage by itself because it's really good. It has fennel taste, but it's not an insane. Let's fucking clobber you in the head with fennel right. flavor. It was really good. It, it it was great. Um, I even told Clint about it. I'm like, dude, you have to fucking go. And he's like, my wife goes there all the time, and she's never taken me. <laughs> we need to all go on a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday night and just deals. gorge. I guess their children can come. <laughs> <laughs> you guess. I, uh, children. You know, I, I kind of want to try the Hawaiian. You go for it. I'll swap a slice with you again. I again, this place has done n- nothing to make me doubt them. Everything. It's a chain and the way that they treat this is like if it was a mom and pop, the way that these pizzas come out. Like they have the dough, they stretch them out right there for you, they make them right in front of you. You know, the sauce is uh, reduced to the point where it has to be. You know, it's not a fucking wet, sloppy mess. They know what they're doing, and if this, all of these, all of this is from corporate, then 
these people need to open a whole lot more locations because I feel, and as much as I hate this, they can run out of town a bunch of mom and pop places that shouldn't be open. Yeah, you took me to a mom and pop place. Not good. That place was good. Mm, not good. That day it wasn't good. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> it just tasted like salt. The wings tasted Everything like salt. Everything tasted like salt. Yeah. But anyway, we're not here to talk about those people. Right. No. This place, fantastic. I, I think garbage. Garbage, definitely. All day. Yes, most definitely. Kind of makes me want to go and get You that. know what we should do sometime? Mm. We should go when we ain't broke on a Tuesday. We should get four. That's what I was thinking. But we'd have to get four drinks, too. It was not care. the end of the world. We're still care. saving money. Right. We're getting four Bring pizzas for the home. price. Four pizzas for the price of what it costs us to eat there once. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Four pizzas for the cost of what it would take to get, like, two pizzas and breadsticks at Pizza Hut. And it's better pizza. Yeah, it is. Well, they have a caprese salad. Ooh. Ooh, I bet that's good. Meatballs I, and Yeah, I would order. like to try their other appetizers and stuff that they have, but that salad's so fucking good. Yeah, that Caesar is pretty fucking Those croutons salad. are just... <gasps> Heavenly. Oh, and the chocolate chip cookie. Oh, yeah, we did have a chocolate chip cookie um, the first time. Fucking awesome. I thought it just looked really good and it wasn't going to taste very good. But I didn't realize that it was on like a warmer. So it was still hot and, and gooey. gooey and very rich um, to the point that we did not finish it. Uh, but we were also silly and, well, I was silly because the person was like, do you want it, like, before your pizza's made? Because it's just, like, right there at the register. I was like, sure, why not? Perks of being an adult. We should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> it would have taken away the sting of that spicy butcher. It was very, very good. Uh, and fresh. Like, I'm sure it was made that day. Oh, yeah. And well, just kept on the warmer. Last time we went they didn't, they didn't have, have any. any and they didn't have the same um bottled drinks that they did that first time because no. that first time i got diet dr pepper and the second time that cooler was only full of coke stuff right but the drinks the bottled drinks didn't count for the deal anyway so i really want to try the meatballs and ricotta next time we go Ooh, ooh, yum so look it's like meatballs with sauce mm -hmm. and ricotta and then they give you like Three pieces of crust. Yeah. To dip it. Ooh. Yeah, that, that looks fucking great. Yum. Yeah, I'm yeah. about that. So I'm about this place in general. It's very good. And to think a week before you're like, I'm not really a New York style pizza kind of person. Oh, shut the fuck up. I didn't want to eat pizza, okay? You took me to that awful fucking place. It was it, terrible. It was bad that one I felt day. bad for that poor waiter boy. He was so nice. He was very nice. And there was no one there. <laughs> that place was dead because it's not good. It, it It's good. It was we good. We were literally the only people in that restaurant. It was us, him, and the cook. That's true. Salting everything the fuck up. Because that one day that I got it and I ate everything before I got home on my drive from Albany. You must have just been starved It that was day. very good. Um, yeah. So, Okay. That's it for this episode, Yeah, it's right? time for bed. What time Lord is it? Help. 11, Ow, 11 21. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's it for this week's episode. First Etovania of the year. Ooh. You enjoying it? Yeah. Good. Now I just need to know when I ha I need to have Burger Champs Eto Red. Tomorrow. So, tomorrow. I, I, I need Burger. Burger. Champ. Please let us know when we're recording so we can have everything ready. All right. Um, I don't need to procrastinate any more than I already do. Nope. So throw away your phone. No. All right. So that's it for this week's episode of A Novel Console. Kaden, do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>